Hello, I'm Andy Heath and I'm a puppeteer. Now, I'm originally from Jersey, but I left the island nearly 25 years ago to pursue a career in puppetry, which was my passion when I was growing up. Now, over that period, I've been involved with all kinds of companies like the BBC, Walt Disney Productions and the Jim Henson Company. And I've worked on all kinds of projects from Star Wars, Sesame Street, The Muppets and The Dark Crystal. But I've not just worked for them as a performer, but occasionally as a puppet builder. And I'm making this video for you today to show you how to make your own hand and rod style puppet like this. Hello? Oh, oh cranky hello. He must be talking about me. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is print out the puppet pattern, which is on two pieces of A4 paper. You print these out at 100% and check that everything matches up. Then take a pair of scissors and cut them all out. To save space, the mouth pattern has actually been marked on the big space inside the body of the puppet. Just ignore that big hole when you come to mark it out on the fabric. Then check all your points match up again and you should end up with a pattern like this. Then take the fur. I'm using a nice pink shaggy fur in this case. Lie it out flat and make sure you know which way the direction is going. Then place your puppet pattern onto the fabric and draw around it with a permanent marker. If you use a felt tip, it will literally run off onto your hands as you cut it out and stitch it. So make sure that this is either a Sharpie or some other kind of permanent fabric marking pen. Then flip the pattern over and draw the other side like that. There are a few markers on the pattern, especially on the middle of the mouth. Make little marks with your pen that'll help you to glue in the mouth section a little later. There's also an arm guide hole which is just to let you know where you should probably stitch on the arms later on. Next, take a nice sharp pair of scissors and we are going to cut out this pattern in order to stitch the two sides together. Oh wait, 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 wait. This is actually a really good time to tell you about cutting out fur properly. So here's a piece of pink fluffy fur. What you want to do is take your sharp pair of scissors and just cut the backing on the material, taking care not to cut through the fur on the other side. We do this because it makes stitching together the puppet later much neater and also means you're not wasting any of that lovely precious floppy fur on the other side. There you go, see it's all hanging down nicely. If you were to take a pair of scissors and just hack away at it like this, snip, 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 you'd end up with a much rougher finish and it'd be much harder to hide seams when you're stitching it together later. So what I've just done here is a big no, no. And moving on. Here we go. Cut all this pattern out like so. There's that nice edge I told you about. And when you've cut them both out, then we can start thinking about pinning them together in order to stitch them. There you go, there's your two halves of the puppet. This is pink fleece, and I'm gonna use this for the arms of the puppet. You can use the fur if you want, but I like to have some variety in the textures. So draw one hand on, on the back of the fabric, flip it over, draw the other side, and then do it again so that you've got front and back for both arms and hands. Then take the two pieces of fur fabric from the body and start to put them together where you're going to stitch them. This bit here is underneath the chin. So I'm gonna put a little pin in here, which will just hold it in place and make it much easier when I start to stitch. You basically want to put pins around every part that you're stitching. This is down the front of the puppet and then I'm also gonna put pins down the back of the puppet It'll hold all the fur in place and make it much easier in general. There we go. Then take a needle and thread, and in this particular stitch, I'm just gonna whip it around. So there we go, we go in one side, go over the top, pull it through again, go over the top, pull it through again. It's a very simple stitch, and of course, if you're using a sewing machine, you can go so much faster. Just make sure you leave yourself a little bit of seam allowance when you mark the pattern on the fur. And hey presto, we have one stitched body of the puppet there we go and then we do the hands and the arms there you go pin them into place and whip stitch them all the way around leaving a gap at the top and a gap under the wrist which is where we can put a puppet rod a little later on then take an object like a paintbrush or a pencil which will help you turn the whole thing inside out 
can be fiddly and can be a bit frustrating, but it's totally worth it. So just take your time and you'll get there in the end. We'll speed this up for the sake of ease. Once the main part is turned inside out, just go back in again with the end of the paintbrush just to open up those fingers a little bit. It's really going to help when you're stuffing it later and putting in some wire so that you can make them poseable. There you go, one arm ready to be stuffed. And there's another one! <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I think we've all had enough stitching for a while, so let's step away from fur and fabric and look at the inside of the mouth. Now this is like a flexible rubber you find on the sole of a shoe. You can get this from any kind of key cutters. And this is just some basic card. Quite strong, but it's, it's just a piece of card. You can make a mouth out of either of these, but for the sake of showing you guys, we're going to use card because it's more accessible. There's the pattern. So use a marker and draw those two patterns on there. There's a top one and there's a bottom one. You'll notice that the top pattern is a little bit bigger than the bottom one. And this is so you get a nice overbite. It'll mean your mouth closes really nicely. When you want to start playing around with shapes, you could put the overbite on the bottom and bite up instead. Then you take some fabric, in this case we're going to use red felt, and draw around this pattern, which will give you the inside of the mouth. Once you've drawn on it, make little markers at the top and the bottom. Again, this is going to help you with placing the mouth into the head later on. And then take some scissors and cut the whole thing out. There you go. Okay. So now we're going to glue the hard part of the palette onto the red fabric. I use an impact adhesive because it's super strong and very flexible. So you put it onto both sides that you're going to glue together and then you step away and leave it dry for about five minutes until it becomes slightly tacky. Always put the lid on your glue. So just double checking, there's my mouth fabric pattern. And as you can see, that's the top and that's the bottom. Great, there you go, slight overbite. So we're gonna glue one of these onto the top and one onto the bottom. There's that little marker I told you about. That'll just help you get it in the middle of the, of the palette. Okay, there's one side and the bottom as well. And then hopefully we've got a nice hinged palette like this. You can see it's kind of reminiscent of Kermit the Frog. Here's another one in rubber. I'm going to use rubber for the sake of this puppet because this one's already made. So there we go. So the next thing we're going to do is glue that palette into the head of the puppet. So take your fur body and head and run the glue all around the outside of the mouth. Only by about two to three millimeters on the backing of the fabric. Okay. It can get a bit messy. You might get fur stuck on the glue. So just keep a piece of tissue handy or kitchen roll just to clean off the nozzle. And there we go, all the way around the outside, like so. All right, then take the palette and do the same on the fabric side. So in this case, it's red fabric. So we're just gonna run glue two, millimeter, two to three millimeters around the outside. Wait about five minutes for that to cure and then bring the two edges together like this. Now, I always take my time on this job more than any other job on the puppet because you want the mouth to look fantastic. So just put on some calm music. Take your time, breathe in, breathe out. If it goes wrong, just peel it off slightly and put it back on again, okay? And we're gonna do that all the way around the outside, just pulling the fur out of the way so it doesn't get stuck in the glue. It's just, it's just one of those jobs that you have to take your time with. When it's all joined up, just go around one more time with your fingers and thumbs and squeeze those two edges together to really make sure that glue has taken a hold. Okay, there we go. Nice squeeze there all the way around. And here we are, look at that, there you go. There's a puppet mouth. Okay, all looking very good, very pleased with that. Mm -hmm. All works beautifully. So. Now, remember earlier, we made a little line where we thought the arm might come through. There we go on the inside of the body. So take a sharp pair of scissors and just cut the backing on that fur over that little line. And you'll end up with a split on the outside that looks like that, okay? So then we're gonna take our arm, which is now the right way round, and just pop that into the slit of the body just there. Then we grab the whole thing on the inside and pull it inside out. Ta-da! Something like that. Okay. 
Then we're gonna take a needle and thread and basically whip through that to hold the arm in place on the body, okay? It can be quite hard to get the needle through the whole thing, but if you just take your time, there you go, all the way around, all the way around through both pieces of fabric. So you end up with something that looks a little bit like this, okay? Now, for extra strength, I tend to go back down again. I think I just do that out of habit now. Again, it just gives you double stitching and means things will be stronger. Okay, let's make the wire for the inside of the hands that will make them poseable. Now, I'm using armature wire, which you can get from a craft shop, but you can just as easily use green garden wire. And what we're going to do is shape the wire into the shape of the fingers over the original pattern like this. There you go, and if you lay that down, you can see that's roughly the right shape, okay? Then we're gonna take the wire and twist it several times around each finger. This will make it into a solid bone structure inside the hand and give it much more of a definite shape. Make any adjustments you need to and cut off any excess wire to make sure it fits neatly inside the hand. It should fit over the original pattern like so. Obviously, do this twice so you have one for the other hand. Then take some sort of tape, in this case I'm using fabric tape, and just pass it around the two loose ends of the wire to make it nice and solid, like this. Then we're gonna take that wire and put it into the pre-stitched hand. This means your puppet can be super expressive. It can point, it can gesture, and it can hold things, okay? So this is a little bit fiddly. You want to get all that wire in through the gap on the bottom of the hand. It can take a while, but just be super patient. You want to make sure you've got one in the thumb, one in the finger, one in the middle finger, and one in the puppet's pinky, like this. Ta-da! Now, this is toy stuffing, and you can get this at any craft store, or you can get it at a fabric store, or even get it online. It's what we stuff cuddly toys with. And we're gonna take a little and put it into each finger in this puppet, just getting it around the metal that's in there. It just bulks out the hand and gives you some substantiality towards the puppet's look. Okay, so we'll do the fingers, the hand, and then also up in the arm as well. And it's still poseable, there you go, okay. This little gap we've left here, that's where we're gonna put a rod very shortly. But right now, let's talk about eyes. Eyes, eyes, and more eyes. So this is a selection of eyes that you can use for your puppet. Some of them are from a shop pre-made. The one we're gonna use is a ping pong ball because it's accessible. I've got a nice bright yellow one here. Now you might wanna be careful with this. You need a sharp pair of scissors and you wanna cut along that seam on the ping pong ball. It'll give you two even halves. It is a little bit fiddly with a pair of scissors. So just be super careful or get help if you need it. Okay, there we go. And now we've got two halves, which will make up our eyes. Here are some anti-slip pads. You can get these from hardware stores. Uh, they basically go on the bottom of things to stop them slipping. They make great pupils because they're already sticky and you can just stick them straight on. Then we're gonna decide where our eyes go on the puppet. You can go on the side, you can go in the middle, you can go at the front. These are all different types of eyes to show you how the character can change. Oh, they're my glasses. <laughs> Okay, we're on to another fiddly part now, which is gluing these eyes onto the head. So you can see that I've pressed into the fur and made a very rough circle on roughly where it should go. Now what we wanna do is we wanna cut away the fur in a circle, roughly where the eye is gonna go. It'll just help the eye stay nice and flat on the head. Again, it's a little bit fiddly, so I suggest you put the eye on and just rotate it around and know where it's going to go. Once again, take your sharp scissors and just cut the fur out in a small circle off the head. Now again, this can take a little while to get right and don't be upset if you don't get it right the first time. So you can see there that we've exposed the backing of the fur a little more than you would. Then you put some glue onto the side of the eye. The inside's always best. You don't want any glue on the outside. There we go. And we're just gonna press that onto the head roughly where it needs to go. There we go. You can sort of see the ball patches there. So put one eye on, give it a little press. Put the other eye on, give it a little press. And just try and get that focus looking nice. There we go, you can see that puppet is roughly looking forward. Okay? And once again, this glue takes a few minutes to go off. So while it's doing that, 
I can go and start on the arm rods. And for these rods, we're using a metal coat hanger because they're very accessible. So first of all, cut the coat hanger into two equal halves and then use a pair of pliers to straighten out each one. So you get two nice straight rods. You're gonna to want to bend a handle onto one end because otherwise trying to grip it with just a thin piece of wire is going to be very difficult. So you can see there, I put a little square on. There we go. And what I'm gonna do on the end of that is also put a little bit of tape later on just to make it super neat. At the other end, bend a small square so it looks something like this. Again, do it on both rods. Then take a little bit of tape and just make that join there a bit safer. You don't want to catch your hand on sharp pieces of coat hanger wire. And there you go, there's your two rods. It's worth pointing out you can make rods out of other things as well. Here's some professional puppet rods. As you can see we've got wooden handles and a piece of steel wire running down which has been covered with some black tape. Right, so the square end of the rod goes into the hand like this, okay? And that'll give you movement at the wrist. Then take a needle and thread and just stitch that hole back up. That should hold everything roughly in place. And there you have it. Follow all those instructions and you can make a character that's as simple but as expressive as this little guy right here. And remember, you don't have to stop there. You can add things like ears, nose, tail, teeth, whatever you like to make your own special little creature. So, that's about it. Oh, if you have any questions, you can reach me at andymakespuppets at gmail.com. Okay, happy building.